Hi there, old crafty friends of mine. So glad to see you back. And if you're new to my channel, here's a great big welcome. I hope you'll become one of my crafty friends and join me here every week. This is part two of the ballerina canvases. I'll be doing some decoupage, some 3D effects with clay and chipboard, and I'll show you how to make plain old paper flowers look like little works of art. If you saw part one, a lot of the steps will be the same, but stay with me anyway so you can see the finished product. It's going to be as beautiful as the first one. If you're ready, let's make a mess. To begin with, I'm going to give the canvas a coat of gesso, the top and the sides as well. This gives the canvas a nice surface to decoupage on. I purchased some beautiful decorative papers from Hobby Lobby. You should be able to get them at any craft store. I'm going to rip them into pieces and then glue them on the canvas. I'm spraying the paper with water so that I can tear it easily. This way you don't get a sharp cut edge. It gives you a nice subtle line between your papers. Make sure you stick around to the end. I'll be showing you how to turn satin ribbon into a beautiful vintage bow. And I'll have a picture of both canvases so you can see how beautiful they look together. Although some of the steps are the same, the outcome is different. I'm using Mod Podge to glue everything down on my canvas. This one is rice paper, one of my favorites to use for decoupage. It's somewhat translucent, so you can see the design of the papers under it just a little bit. And I love that look. It's a little bit too fragile to spray the whole thing with water, so I'm using a water brush just around the edges and then I'll tear it very carefully. If you don't have a water brush, you can just use a paintbrush and some water and that'll work the same. After I'm finished gluing down all my paper pieces, I'm going to give the entire surface another coat of Mod Podge and then let it dry. I want to carry over that same jagged paper look to the edges of my canvas as well. So I'm tearing the paper and gluing it down with Mod Podge. I'm spraying the paper again with some more water because it makes it easier to bend over the edges. And I'm gluing the edges down with some more Mod Podge. I have a lace doily that I cut in half that I'll be adding to the canvas. But before I do, I need to get those edges jagged. I'm 
I hope you're enjoying this tutorial. If you are, hit that like button. And don't forget to subscribe and share it with your friends. I found this beautiful chipboard flourish at Hobby Lobby and I'm using a sponge to paint it gold. I watered down some brown paint because I want this step to be more of a wash and not just dark brown paint. I'm feathering the watery paint from the center of the flourish out to create some interest and dimension. Dark brown paint added low lights, so now I'll add some highlights by adding some white frost wax rub to the flourish. This white rub is so pretty, it looks frosty. I have some dark brown glitter glue that I got at the dollar store. I'm putting the brown glitter glue over where I painted the brown wash and then I'll feather it out just like I did the brown. By the way, have you noticed everything at the dollar store is now $1.25? Did they do that where you live too? I made a ballerina and a pair of ballet slippers using Sculpey oven bake clay. The ballerina was so delicate, this was the only clay that I was able to use, and I had to bake them in the mold before I was able to unmold them. I'm actually a fan of air dry clay, but for this project, I couldn't use it at all. I kept breaking her poor little arms and legs off. I glued a star stick on the back of both the ballerina and the slippers with a glue gun so I would have a handle while I was working on them and they'll be removed a little bit later. I'm painting both the ballerina and the slippers a metallic gold. I'm going to make a watery brown wash again like I did for the flourish. I'll paint the ballerina and slippers with the wash and wipe it off. It will stay in all the cracks and crevices to add some depth and dimension. I'm adding some white highlights with the white frost rub to the ballerina and slippers, just like I did on the flourish, and they are really starting to look pretty now. I love glitter, so I'm adding some pink glitter glue to the bottom of her tutu. 
and I decided that wasn't quite enough glitter. So I added some chunky pink glitter to the glue. Show of hands, how many of you are glitter fans? Be honest. I'm all done decorating my ballerina and slippers. So I'm going to add a coat of gloss varnish and let them dry. going to make some spray paint because I'll be doing some special effects with paint. I found these little spray bottles on Amazon and they're just perfect for what I need them for. I'm adding some water and then just a little bit of paint so it will spray properly. I made blue, white, and pink. Wait until you see what we're going to do with these. I'm getting ready to decorate the flowers. I glued a star stick to these two so I'll have a handle again. These are just plain paper flowers which I got from Hobby Lobby in the scrapbooking section. I'm going to spray them with a little bit of triple thick glaze sealer. It'll stiffen them up a little bit so I can paint them. Right now I am separating the petals so I can get the spray in between them. On this flower, I'm going to add some gold wax rub to the petals. Then I'll add some white frost rub to the petals as well. After that, I'll give it a spritz with the white spray paint that I made. When you try this, you may want to wear gloves. I really made a mess on my hand. I wanted the center of the flower to be a little deeper white, so I'm adding a little bit of extra paint to the very center of the flower. I'm painting the stamens in the center of the flower gold. The white rub is making this rose look like satin. I'm filming from Las Vegas, Nevada in the United States, and it is a beautiful day here today. Where are you watching from? Send me a quick comment. Let's see how many countries and how far across the United States this video is being watched. I'd love to know. I put the gold rub just on the very edges of this little rosebud and it looks so pretty. Now that all the flowers are decorated, I'll add a coat of triple thick glaze spray sealer to all the flowers and the flourish. I'm going to add a little bit of interest and texture to this piece. I'm using some pre-mixed grout and stencils. This is so easy and adds so much interest to any project. Once the grout dries, I'm going to give this piece a coat of matte spray sealer. I intend to do some paint effects and I don't want the paint to stain the papers. I'm using the spray paint I made to add a mist of color to the grout texture. I'm spraying and wiping with a damp rag because these little sprayers are sending paint everywhere and I only want the mist of paint on and close to the textured areas.
I'm adding a dark edge using Iced Espresso Wax Rub. I'm applying it with a sponge and this will give the piece an antique look. Now we're going to make that pretty little vintage bow I told you about. I cut a length of satin ribbon and I'm brushing it with some pink paint. Then I'll add a little bit of the blue paint here and there. After I paint both sides, I'll scrunch it up in a little ball and wrap it up with some twine. And then I'll leave it overnight to dry. After I unwrap and stretch out the ribbon, I'm going to add a little bit of gold rub. It's time to glue all the beautiful embellishments that we made to the canvas. Which one of these techniques were you the most excited about learning? decoupage, 3D effects, or painting the paper flowers. What type of craft tutorials would you like to see next? More decoupage, more 3D effects, or some in-depth painting techniques? Let me know in the comments. I'm marking the canvas with some little strips of painter's tape so I know exactly where I'm going to put everything once I have the glue on it. With hot glue, you only get one chance. Tell me which canvas you liked the best, Ballerina Part 1 or Ballerina Part 2? If you haven't seen the first video, Ballerina Part 1, make sure you go in and watch it so you can vote. I'll make sure at the end of the video, there's a link for you to click and go in and watch it. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you learned something new. Make sure to like and subscribe so I can bring you more craft videos just like this one in the future. I put together a playlist of other mixed media tutorials that you may enjoy. Click the next picture to be taken directly to that playlist.